Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Iconic Houses Board, I'm delighted to welcome you at our fourth conference. Los Angeles is a profoundly inspiring location, thanks to its density of astonishing 20th century architecture and houses in particular. I hope uh, by the way, that you can look back on a wonderful first day yesterday. Half of this audience was in the house tours, and the other half was in the expert meetings that Susan McDonald already mentioned. Um, we have deliberately kept the number of the attendees small because the houses that we're going to tour have a limited capacity, and also to enhance the interaction between all of us. We are from 11 different countries here, and um, I'm happy that we reached the exact number of participants that we have anticipated. Um, I heard already that the tours yesterday have been amazing, and um, the expert meetings were very um, useful, um, and it was a very fruitful gathering. So we're now finally here together in the lecture hall for, the, for today and tomorrow's lectures and the tours in the afternoon to private iconic houses. Um, yesterday there was some breaking news and I already emailed it to you. Um, so excited that exactly in this week when we are here together to talk about this subject, that James Goldstein, the owner of the legendary Sheets Goldstein residence that uh, was designed by John Lautner in 1963, um, announced to the, to the media that he uh, bequeathed his house to, the L, uh, to LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Um, the house is estimated at $40 million, which is a conservative estimate according to Goldstein. And it comes, the, the, uh, the donation comes with a $17 million endowment for its maintenance. So this is very timely news, since we will visit the house tomorrow for a tour, and we end our day there as well with our cocktail party at Club James. According to the LA Times, Goldstein has agreed to let the museum organize limited tours and events while he is living in the house, and we will meet him as well tomorrow. In the longer term, LACMA envisions opening it for fundraisers, exhibitions and conferences, as well as collaborations with other museums. So far, the news. With this conference, we are returning to our roots. In 2012, we launched Iconic Houses at the Schindler House, and in 2013, the first Iconic Houses Symposium was held in Palm Springs, organized by the Annenberg Retreat at Sunnylands and the Palm Springs Art Museum. And look where we find ourselves now. The Getty Center as location couldn't be better. Designed by Richard Meyer, the architect known for his famous houses like the Douglas House and the Smith House. We are fortunate that we have found a partner and a conference host with such outstanding facilities and kind and professional staff. <coughs> And I want to thank, therefore, the, G the Getty Foundation and the Getty Conservation Institute for hosting this event and give wonderful support in creating the program. And with the Getty Conservation Institute, that also brought us our enthusiastic conference partner, Susan McDonald. I also want to mention the director of the Gamble House, Ted Bosley, who was in our team and unfortunately can only be here today for his lecture and then has to promote his new book about the Gamble House at another conference. He has been a wonderful support in making this happen. Thanks to the Pasadena Heritage, we got the preservation director, Jesse Leddick, in our team to organize the program here with our Getty partners so professionally. Not an easy task, since there is a lot of logistics involved and our local tour organizer, Kristen Stone, director of the Pasadena Tour Company, stepped in for the house tours, which was a huge challenge, given the LA traffic and the distances involved. Thanks to their tireless plotting and planning, we can join the lectures here in the mornings and see some of the most memorable houses in a short space of time in the afternoon tours. We are thankful for all our hosts, guests, sponsors, volunteers, docents, and everybody else who has made this year's conference possible, including the speakers, around 40 people have been involved, and the result is that this conference has more lectures than we ever had, more tours than we had before, and it was made possible because we also had more support than ever. Today I will start to give you a quick update about what has happened since those early days and end with a brief explanation of our program. In November 2012, a small group of house museum directors launched the Iconic Houses Network in order to connect the people that run or own a modern house museum. The idea was to share knowledge and support and exchange stories and ideas and promote the group as a whole to the public that visits these houses. In only three and a half years, we have built a solid reputation 
as a unique platform for professional debate concerning the conservation, policy and management of modern house museums. Through this discussion, our members are empowered to undertake new initiatives to develop the potential of their house museums from marketing to programming events to collaborations with other houses. Today our website lists 150 significant houses from the 20th century, including some of the world's most famous examples, designed by almost 100 important architects and located in 30 different countries. A major aim of Iconic Houses is to study the most important houses of the 20th century and to raise awareness of their significance and their need for protection. As examples of experimental modern living, these houses are part of our collective heritage and the foundation of our lifestyle aspirations today. We hope that the Iconic Houses Network can further develop the existing information and knowledge about modern house museums and provide a platform for professional discussion. We aim to share best practices, but also to encourage each other to develop new activities. Ultimately, we also hope to be able to stop the demolition and mutilation of prominent architects' houses. We are in the process of adding a new category to our network, artists, homes and studios. These museums attract the same kind of visitor as the architects' houses and face similar issues. Sometimes the boundaries between art and architecture are hard to tell. Donald Judd, for instance, was an artist who considered himself an architect as well, and he designed the furniture and built-ins of his own homes and studios in Soho and Marfa. We have 10 of these artists' homes and studios now on our website and have 150 of them worldwide in our database as a result of our research of the past two years. We are in touch with around 50 of them right now and will launch this new category to the press as soon as we have listed around 50 of them. Another category are the private houses. Because of the existence of our website and network, some owners who already welcomed architects, architecture students and journalists start making it known through a website that they also welcome other visitors by appointment. About 25 of these houses are now listed on Iconic Houses website, are still privately owned and lived in while also admitting visitors to see their house. These are some of these examples. So when I speak of we and us, you might think, who are they? Most of you know me, but there is more to it. Let me briefly explain to you our structure. First, there was the idea, then followed by a legal foundation, a legal form, organization, uh, based in Amsterdam, where we work in a team of freelancers, mainly my colleague designer Willy van Burgstede, who is here this week, and myself, assisted by a freelance editor and since this year with a fundraiser to strengthen our financial positions, position for the years to come. We work with and for the network. A part of our budget is created by the annual membership dues that, from the member houses that are listed on our website. This is not sufficient, however, to cover the invested time and must in the near future be complemented by sponsoring or advertisements. And we have, of course, partners with which we work together, but this is on a trade basis. Then we have several boards. Our organizing committee consists of five directors of famous modern house museums. Today are here Linda Wagoner, director of Falling Water, Iveta Tjerna, director of Villa Tugendhat, Kimberly Meyer, director of the Mac Center. The fourth, Susanna Pettersson, former director of the Alva Aalto Foundation, was not able to come, but played a crucial role in setting up iconic houses since she was the first to acknowledge the importance of the idea and supported it. With a little seed money from the Alva Aalto Foundation, we could start transforming our idea into a form. The design of the website was born. But we are happy to have her successor among us this week, Tommy Lind, as director of the Alfa Alto Foundation. And he will be chairing an academic committee that is in formation right now to review applications of houses that want to join us. And we have the moral support of our ambassadors like architect Richard Meyer, architectural historians like Kenneth Frampton, John Louis Cohen, and Raymond Noritre, the son of the architect who designed many of these iconic houses and who is also with us at this conference. And then we have our activities. Um, 
we expand the number of houses, of course. In the end, we just want to have all important houses in the whole world listed on the website. We want to create partnerships so that uh, other countries are organizing events as well. We are going to publish a book. And so there are lots of new initiatives. Um, since I started my research in 2008, I've seen many new houses being opened to the public. Here's a quick scan of the houses that were new in the house museum landscape since then. Take a minute to read. Eight of them are with us here today. Eileen Gray's Villa E 1027, opened last year. The Melnikov House in Moscow. Villa Cavoie in France. Isaacon Gallery in London. Sunnylands in Rancho Mirage. Taut's home in Berlin and the Van Eystre Museum apartment in Amsterdam. We want to know more about the sector. Later this year, we will conducting our first ever in-depth membership survey so that we can better document the development of our sector. Anecdotal evidence suggests that visitors rates are expanding, but how much, how many, and what does that mean for the organizations that run them? In conducting our survey, we will meet with our members and listen to their experiences in order to develop tools to facilitate better internal communication within our network and so better leverage our collective skills and knowledge. Then I show you some facts and figures to date. The growth between 1950 and 2015. 2015. I heard uh, North America has 15,000 house museums, but these figures are just house museums uh, for, that, are, uh, significant, that are museum because of their significant architecture. So there has been a uh, graduation thesis in 2010, and this graph is based on those figures, except for the last one between 2010 and 15, that is based on my own quick scan uh, of the past five years. So you see there is an enormous growth. And you see here the distribution of the museums per country. Uh, on the bottom, you see there it are the most in the United States, and then a few have a lot, a lot of these house museums. There's um, France, uh, the Netherlands, and Spain. And when you see it on this graph, North America is, has the largest uh, number, then Europe, and we think, I know, there must be more in South America, and our goal is to research this more thoroughly in 2017, not only research is, that's been done already, but really go there and meet the people and try to convince them to, to become part of this network. Part of our mission is to go out there and to promote these houses and to cooperate between the houses. One example is that um, Villa Tugendhat in Brno and uh, Ungers Archive in Cologne, who is also here, this week, and uh, Van Schijndel House, my house in Utrecht. We work together since last year, we organize a yearly Iconic Houses lecture, and we invite somebody from abroad, this was Henry Urbach, and we organize a tour from, for him from Amsterdam to Cologne to Brno, and this year Linda Wegener will also give uh, a European tour. Another example of uh, initiatives that uh, were born because of the existence of the network is a traveling exhibition from T Villa Tugendhat that will be uh, shown this year at Villa Steenersen in uh, Oslo. And another initiative this year later in fall will be the Centre Monument National in France, the national heritage organization there. They intend to organize a national gathering and of course people from Spain and Germany can also come. So lots of things are happening. Then our biannual international conferences are an important part of our network, both in getting our message across, stimulating discussion and in connecting our members. In 2018, the conference will return to Europe and in 2020, we go to the East Coast of the USA, where I hope to see you all again. And in the intervening years, we collaborate with national partners. A few words then to the program. In this guide, that will be your life, that will be your life uh, line. This, uh, for these two days. We have done our utmost to give you the basic information and to get you familiar with all of our speakers, organizers, supporters, and house tour hosts. The theme of the conference is a California state of mind, the modern house museum in Southern California. 
Since LA is the spiritual home of the modern house, there are plenty of extraordinary and inspirational houses to visit. The story of the mid-century modern movement was told in one day with yesterday's tours of the Gamble House, the Hollyhock House, Schindler House and Neutra Houses. And today and tomorrow we will see landmark homes like the Eames House, the Sheets Goldstein Residence and several more. We are thrilled to be holding our closing cocktail party at the Goldstein House on Friday. And um, the theme today is conserving the modern house, while tomorrow we will discuss the approaches to the modern house museums. With our speakers, we try to ensure that all the key stakeholders, curators, owners, architects and residents are represented for a variety of perspectives and opinions. The East Coast is represented as well as California. We hear tomorrow's keynote speaker Toshiko Mori about her additions to houses of modernist masters and Malachi Connolly explains later this morning the interesting Cape Cod rescue model, how three modernist houses were saved from the wrecking ball by the Cape Cod Modern House Trust and now rented out as holiday homes. I tell you a little bit about our guest of honor, Harry Gessner. Um, I must admit that I only discovered his work after seeing his beautiful Scantlin house, which is tucked away here at the Getty Center itself. Gessner's work and his life as a surfer and a lover of fast cars exemplifies the California state of mind, uh, which is our conference theme. And this Scantlin house, because the Getty Foundation offered us to have a small VIP reception for our speakers and sponsors on Tuesday evening, um, and so when Susan McDonald mentioned this villa, I thought, okay, but if all these important people uh, who deal with these iconic houses come there, then is this villa iconic enough? So I started to research, and then I found out that during the construction phase of the Getty Center, Richard Meyer um, told the, his client uh, not to tear down this villa that uh, Harry Gessner has designed in 1965 for Jack Scantlin. Um, he, uh, so he saved this villa, it could have been torn down, but uh, it was restored and during the construction Richard Meyer never stayed in a hotel, but always stayed in that villa. Um, we are tremendously happy that we can visit this afternoon the house that Harry Gessner designed for himself and his fourth wife Nan Martin in Malibu and that there will be a Q&A with him here tomorrow to conclude this series of lectures. Without the generous support of our sponsors and friends of Iconic Houses, this four-day event would not have been made possible. I'd like to mention the organizations and companies who helped us to finance the event. The Annenberg Retreat at Sunnylands, with Jenny Elsner Associates, ECMI Technologies, Architecture Tours LA, and Kelly Sutherland McLeod Architecture. And a special thanks to our lead sponsor and real estate agent, Crosby Doe, the developer behind the website Architecture for Sale that shows that it is even possible not only to dream about these magnificent houses, but that it is also possible to even buy them. And you will meet the Dwell team that is reporting about us when they launch a new online platform in June. At previous conferences, I've always been glad to see how our members from different places can meet and connect. And these conference encounters have resulted in some successful exchanges after everybody has gone home, as I showed you. Um, so, as the founder of the network, I'm looking for outcomes, whether in the creation and dissemination of information, whether that is about promotion or interpretation, and what sort of strategic partnerships we can form to build strategic momentum and to protect the yet to be loved. Let me conclude by wishing you interesting lectures this morning and enjoyable house tours. Um, you might have noticed already that we are videoing today's events, also tomorrow. So you will be able to view and listen to all of this again back home. I organized a conference that I myself would love to attend, and I hope you will like it too. And since there is a lot, lot to look forward to, I'll now leave the introduction of our keynote speaker, Wim de Witt, to Alan Hess.